Well, when it comes to global markets, probably no brand is stronger than beef from the USA. And few places produce more of it than right here in Oklahoma, which is something my next guest knows more than just a little about. Brad Morgan is known both nationally and internationally for work that saved our beef industry close to $3 billion. Now, Dr. Morgan and his colleagues are turning their attention to international markets, spending part of this past fall in China. Joining me now is meat scientist Brad Morgan. Well, you have to tell me why an industry so steeped in tradition as U.S. beef production is interested in China. Actually, the first reason is that China, as a country, is finally getting the opportunity to buy some things that they want to buy. And they've got lots of money to go ahead and make those decisions in terms of beef or automobiles. Or, uh, in fact, you know, they just purchased Hummers. And on our trip over there, we saw more Cadillac Escalades, Hummers, large automobiles than we'd ever seen any time before that we'd gone there. It's time for them to step up from a quality standpoint, and they want to buy some U.S. beef. So that's why we were there, going on a fact-finding mission with the U.S. Meat Export Federation to find out what our opportunities were there in that uh, blooming country. So we know that they certainly have more mouths than we do, but they still don't consume the amount of beef that we do here in the U.S., do they? No, they only eat about 10 pounds of beef per person per year. Now, compared to 2004, that's up from about 2 to 3 pounds per person per year. So they are starting to eat more beef, and they're starting, starting to eat more high-quality beef, and that's where the United States wants to come into play. We consume about... Uh, 70 pounds of beef per person per year and in fact we raise everything that we produce uh, we consume I should say everything that we produce here in the United States the Chinese can only produce about 25 percent of the beef that they want to consume in their country so again the opportunity is there and we're just trying to position ourselves to furnish them with high quality beef products so if the opportunity is there what roadblocks are we trying to get over well the main thing is is that the people over there they're they're hungry for information and they want to know how to make a decision. And because, you know, the government, let's be honest, has made a lot of those decisions for these people. So when we were over there visiting with them about food safety, about meat safety, about beef grading, about inspection programs, about our production systems, they would write down everything that you would tell them. A lot of things that you would teach in like an introductory animal science class. These people were buying, though, 40, 50, 60 container loads of beef per month, a container being 40,000 pounds. Economically, is the country transitioning? You know, we've both been there and seen the wet markets, those those markets that are very Chinese and everything is fresh, are they transitioning more to grocery stores like we have in the U.S.? You know, the younger generations, that's who we were visiting with. We were visiting with the uh, 40 years of age people and, and under. Yes, they go to retail stores, they go to malls. When we were in Shanghai, for instance, and we were visiting some of the areas where they buy products, some of the malls were phenomenal. And of course, some of this was a result of them hosting the Olympics and uh, trying to get ready for the world, so, you know, uh, customers from all over the, the, the competitors from all over the world. But the young people are certainly doing that. The other thing, too, that was amazing is that we did not have to have interpreters for the young people. They spoke very good English. So they're ready to do business as long as they can ease into this and understand exactly what they're dealing with. Yeah, and I think a lot of people would be surprised how many, I don't want to call them Western-style restaurants because they're really not, but how many restaurants there are now in China. Yeah, there are a lot of restaurants, and I went to a, a few of them visiting, and you know, you want to try to eat the, the normal cultural foods that when you're there. But yeah, you do see more and more, again, younger people going to these, what we would refer to as a steakhouse, but you would see a lot of U.S. products in those particular steakhouses. But they would be smaller servings. They'd be maybe prepared using some type of tabletop grill or a hibachi grill. But again, you think about it. Let's say we could increase consumption through these types of restaurants and food service uh, chains by one pound per person in China next year. Of course, we're talking about 1.3 billion more additional pounds of U.S. beef that could go there. So that's the way you have to look at it. And that rises, raises the price right here in Oklahoma. No, there's no question about it. Raises the price of live cattle. And also, uh, we're talking about a lot of products that we would be sending over there that we may not necessarily have a big market for in this country. So it's a double-edged sword. It's great for our economy, and it's also great for Oklahoma beef producers. All right. Well, certainly some uh, interesting insights. Thank you, Dr. Morgan.